Welcome back to Lost in Livy. You're joining me on a bike ride along the banks of the River Amund as it flows through the town of Livingston. We're starting at the town's western boundary above the Amund Pools. That's them over there in the distance. There are three pools. They have the appearance of Oxbow Lakes but are in fact remnants of the shale oil industry when the river was diverted to allow deep quarries to be dug out for open cast mining. The quarries were closed in the 1950s and flooded to create these havens of wildlife on the river. There are many remnants of the area's industrial past to be discovered as we make our way along the river. Kirkton Weir was built in the mid-19th century to divert water along a narrow lade to Livingston Mill. Like other weirs on the river, this two metre high structure acted as a barrier to many species of fish, meaning much of the breeding habitat upstream remained unavailable. Salmon, sea trout, brown trout, eel and lamprey all rely on a clear path up the river to mate and lay their eggs. They're also a food source relied on by larger predators, such as heron, kingfishers and otters. The River Life Project was set up by Forth Rivers Trust to construct fish passes on the river's weirs. The concrete structure in the middle of the weir is a Larinier pass, which helps salmon and trout, while a separate eel and lamprey pass will allow those species to move upstream. Our path takes us alongside the mill laid. The water drove a 19-foot mill wheel to process corn and wheat at Livingston Mill and the associated mill farm, now known as the Amund Valley Heritage Centre. I'll put a link to the Heritage Centre's website in the description below. There's far more to see and do in the site that stretches for a mile along the river than I can describe here. We pass alongside the lade through the outer paddocks and then around the inner fields with a view of the restored historic buildings. Within the buildings there's a great museum collection with displays relating to the Scottish shale oil industry and its influence worldwide. Oops, there's no room to pass, so I'll reverse back a bit to make space for these two mums and their buggy-bound youngsters. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, right? Cheers. Thank you. We cross over the Laid as it returns to the river and then under the bridge that connects with more of the Heritage Centre site across the river. The next wee bit of path is steep, and below the carpet of leaves I know it's a bit rough and muddy, so I'm pausing to enjoy the river flowing by while these folk walking their dog come down. Afternoon. Afternoon, is it? Okay. <laughs> so soon. So soon. <laughs> Ah, and indeed it is already afternoon. I hadn't realised. Doesn't time fly? This bridge takes us over the Loch Shot Burn as it flows into the Almond. We're passing along below what was the village of Livingston, now named Livingston Village, to distinguish it from the new town of Livingston, which was developed around it from the right, 1960s. The path crosses Charlesfield Lane here, but I'm making a wee detour to the right to look at the river from Livingston Bridge. Before the new town was developed, this was just one of two river crossings in the area, the other being Howden Bridge, which we'll be coming to as we continue downstream. Ahead of us is Livingston Inn, at the heart of the old village of Livingston, but we're turning off to continue along the riverside path. There's a kind of ramp here, up by the side of the steps, 
but it's a bit slippery and my back wheel is spinning in the mud. Thanks. Down below on our right is the confluence of the River Amund and one of its main tributaries, the Killandine Burn. There's a bonny spot in the other bank to pause and enjoy the surroundings. I have some thoughts about crossing the bridge for a look, but it's not really accessible on a bike, so I carry on. I try to be watchful for dogs on these long leads, or off the lead, but this one took me by surprise. Maybe he thought I was a sheep that needed to be herded into a pen. Anyway, I made sure I was ahead of him, and then gave it some welly. He soon gave up. This is the bridge over the Folly Burn, or Ely Burn as it was originally known, and from which the district of Ely Burn gets its name.
Thanks. Keeping to the riverside path, we're now passing through the centre of town. That's the civic centre across on the left, with council offices, courts and police station. And across the river on the right are the shopping malls, eateries, bus station and endless car parks. Across this next bridge is Livingston Skate Park, considered in its heyday to be one of the best in Europe, and it still commands respect today for its retro skating surface. The play park coming up on the left is very popular, but the space was originally an outdoor theatre that unfortunately fell into disrepair and misuse. It lay derelict for many years until the creation of the play park. I'm going to switch across the Howden Park Path Bridge to follow the path along the south bank of the river down to the next bridge. On the left is one of the town's public art installations. Men of Hoy is a concrete sculpture by town artist Dennis Barnes, standing where the Deadridge Burn meets the river. I spotted a grey heron sitting atop the furthest pillar and stopped to watch it. The camera's angle of view makes it hard to spot, but look carefully and you'll see it.
crossing back to the north bank of the river, gives a good view downstream towards the old Howden Bridge. This is a grand viewing platform, and although the information board is useful, there's an error. The top left paragraph about Howden Bridge is very interesting, but it's accompanied by a photograph of the wrong bridge. It shows the Naismith Bridge, which is located a few more miles downstream in Amundel Country Park. <laughs> tut tut. I'm cutting down to the viewing platform for the second of the River Life Project's fish passes that our ride visits. This is the Howden Rock Ramp. Completed in spring 2019, it replaces a 40 metre wide weir built in the 19th century to supply water to a nearby sawmill, now the site of a housing development. The rock ramp extends some distance in front of the old weir, and creates pools and streams with a shallower incline which enable migrating fish to find their way further upstream. Before the rock ramp was created, it's thought that this was the uppermost limit to the salmon and sea trout migration on the Amund, so the improvements here will have opened up much more spawning habitat for these species. We'll head a little further downstream for a different view of the rock ramp. Looking back upstream, the two channels and pools of the Howden rock ramp can be seen quite clearly beyond the Amund viaduct.
I'm holding back at the top of this muddy slope to give these two dog walkers time to reach the bottom before I make my way past them. Hi. All right, thanks. Oops, it sounds like a twig or something has become entangled in my back wheel. I'll stop to investigate. I have something in my back wheel. All clear. Onward! One of the things I enjoy when out on these bike rides is spotting remnants of old structures that point to what went before. There's been a wall along here where the trees are. I wonder if it was a boundary wall to one of the farms or houses that were here before the new town was developed, or perhaps there was a track or road along this way. Hi. Thank you.
We're almost at the end of our ride as we approach the third and last of the fish passes on our route, the Craigs Hill Bypass Channel. The weir was first constructed for a corn mill known as Wallace Mill or West Mill. It was repaired during Livingston's construction and is now redundant. The works to reinstate the bypass channel were completed in the spring of 2019. We'll get a better look from the bridge over the river, which marks the boundary between the new town of Livingston and the historic town of Mid Calder. Further downstream at Mid Calder Weir, work is ongoing to install a Lorinier fish pass and to facilitate that, the path has been closed until it is complete. So I'll finish the video here. We've travelled all the way through Livingston from west to east on a bonny October day. I hope you've enjoyed the ride as much as I have. Ride with me again, Lost in Livy.